need you to do something for me. Something no one else can know about. But you continued, glancing around to make sure no one was listening. I need you. I, I, I need you to get my wife pregnant. Kofi's jaw dropped. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. What? He exclaimed. Are you mad, Badu? How can you ask such a thing? But Badu was desperate. He begged and pleaded with Kofi. If you don't do this for me, people will find out about my secret and I will lose everything. Please, Kofi, I will give you anything you want. Gold, land, anything, name it. I will do it. Please. Badu pleaded desperately. Badu was a proud and selfish man. But he never believed that a day would come when he would be at the mercy of someone. Badu was known far and wide for his immense wealth. His compound was the biggest, his cows were the fattest, and his barn were filled with yams. People respected him wherever he went. When Badu spoke, the villagers listened, even the king listened. They admired him and bowed their heads as he walked by. All the women in the village wished to be his bride. However, Badu had a secret, one that no one in the village knew of. For all his riches, for all his power, and for all his strength, Badu had no manhood. Not a single soul in the village knew about it, and Badu made sure it remained like that. One day, Badu decided to marry. After all, it was expected that a man as wealthy as he is should have a beautiful wife. And the village elders were beginning to remind him. And also his friends were beginning to sing it as a song to him as all of them were married. So, he set his eyes on Amma, the most beautiful young woman in the village. Amma was kind graceful and hard-working. Everyone in Obozom land admired her. Her skin glistened like the river under the sun and her smile could light up the darkest night. When Badu came to Amma's father with bags of gold and baskets of yams, the family was overjoyed as they count themselves lucky to be chosen by Badu. Amma's father had never seen such wealth before as he was poor. He agreed to the marriage immediately and soon after, the village was abuse with talk of the grand wedding. The whole village gathered to celebrate Badu and Amma. Drums were beaten and the women sang songs of joy as some of them were also jealous why some were disappointed as it were not them that was chosen. But deep down, Badu was nervous. He knew that soon his secret might be revealed. After the wedding, Amma moved into Badu's grand house. At first, everything seemed perfect. Badu showered her with gifts and she enjoyed the luxury that came with being his wife. But as days turned into weeks and weeks into months, Amma began to notice something strange about Badu. Badu always found excuses not to come to bed. He was always tired or busy. And every time Amma tried to get close, he would pull away. Amma started wondering. She had heard stories from her friends about marriage and what it meant to be a wife. But with Badu, something was different. Something wasn't right. She didn't understand why Badu always avoided her at night. One evening, Amma decided to confront him. She was nervous, but she needed to know what was happening. As the sun set and the village fell quiet, she approached Badu while he sat on his mat, counting his wealth. Badu, my husband, she began softly. There is something I need to ask you. Badu's heart raced. He knew what was coming. Why do you avoid me? We have been married for months now and you have never ever 
touched me. Badu sighed deeply. His secret was about to come out. Ama, he said, his voice shaking. There is something you don't know about me. I, I, I have no manhood. Ama's eyes widened in shock. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. How could this be? How could a man so wealthy, so respected, have such a terrible secret? But wh why didn't you tell me? Ama asked, her voice trembling. I was afraid, Badu confessed. I was afraid you would leave me. And you know, in our village, it is a taboo for a woman to leave her husband's house. If anyone find out, I will be shamed and you will be blamed too. Amma was devastated. She didn't know what to do. She couldn't leave. But how could she stay with a man who could never give her children? It was every woman's dream to be a mother to carry her husband's child. But with Badu, that dream seemed impossible. Days turned into weeks, and Amma kept Badu's secret. She endured in silence, never telling a soul. But the villagers began to talk. They wondered why Amma, such a beautiful young woman, had not yet become pregnant. Women, who had married after her were already carrying their first children. But Amma's belly remained flat. The gossip spread quickly. Soon, people whispered behind Badu and Amma's back. Maybe Amma is buried, they said. Maybe there is something wrong with her. Badu knew the whisper would only grow louder. He had to do something and fast. So what night... He called his closest friend, Kofi, to his house. Kofi was a strong man, a hunter, and trusted by Badu for many years. Kofi, I need your help, Badu said, his voice low. What is it, my friend? Kofi asked, confused. I need you to do something for me, something no one else can know about. Badu continued, glancing around to make sure no one was listening. I need you. I, I need you to get my wife pregnant. Kofi's jaw dropped. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. What? He screamed. Are you mad, Badu? How can you ask such a thing? But Badu was desperate. He begged and pleaded with Kofi. If you don't do this, people will find out about my secret. I will lose everything. Please, Kofi. I will give you anything you want, gold, land, anything, name it. Kofi was stunned. He didn't want to betray his friend, but he also didn't want to get involved in such a dangerous plan. What if the villagers find out? What if Amma refused? It was too risky. Amma, meanwhile, had no idea about the plot that was unfolding. She continued to live in silence. Bearing the weight of her husband's secret alone, the village gossip grew louder every day and the pressure was mounting on her. One day, as Amma walked to the market, she overheard two women talking about her. Have you heard? Badu and Amma still have no children. One woman whispered, Yes, I wonder what's wrong with her. Maybe she's cursed or maybe she's barren. The other replied, Amma's heart sank. She couldn't bear it any longer. Something had to change. But little did she know that her husband was already planning a solution, one that would bring even more problems to their lives. The days dragged on, and Kofi was still troubled by Badu's request. Every time he saw Amma at the village well, her soft voice greeting him, his stomach tightened. How could Badu ask such a thing? To deceive Amma, to betray his friendship, it was too much. But Kofi had never seen Badu so desperate before. And the more Badu pleaded, the harder it became for Kofi to refuse. One night, as the moon hung low in the sky, Badu visited Kofi again. 
This time, he was holding a small wooden chest, the kind that people kept their most prized possession in. He placed it on the ground between them. Open it, Kofi, Badu whispered. With shaking hands, Kofi lifted the lid. Inside, gold coins sparkled inside the box, and beneath them, a pile of precious stones gleamed like stars. Kofi's eyes widened. He had never seen so much wealth in his life. All of this is yours if you help me, Badu said, his voice trembling with desperation. Please, Kofi, the villagers are talking already. They are starting to suspect something is wrong. If Ama doesn't get pregnant soon, everyone will know about my secret. Kofi stared at the chest, the gold reflecting in, in his eyes, his heart pounded in his chest. This was enough well to set him up for life, to cater for his sick son's medications. He needed the money desperately too, to take care of his family, to never have to worry again. But the weight of what Badu was asking was too heavy for him. I, I, I don't know, Badu. Kofi stammered. This is too dangerous. What if Amma refused? What if people find out? What, what if my own wife finds out? They won't find out, Badu snapped. You can visit her while I'm away. I will make sure no one sees you. Please, Kofi. I have no other choice. Kofi swallowed hard. He knew this was wrong, but the pressure was mounting. The village gossip was growing louder every day, and soon everyone would be pointing fingers. He glanced at the chest of gold again. With this money, he can take care of his sick son. After a while, he said, I will do it, Kofi finally said, his voice barely a whisper. Pado let out a long sigh of relief. <sighs> a twisted smile creeping across his face. Thank you, Kofi. You have saved me. You have saved my life. But as Badu walked away that night, Kofi couldn't shake the feeling that he had just made the worst decision of his life. After Kofi's hesitant agreement, Badu returned home with a nervous energy swelling around him. He had convinced himself that his plan was the only way to save faces and continue living in the respect he had earned from the villagers many years ago. When he walked through the door, Amma greeted him as she always did. Her smile warm, but he could sense a glowing tension between them. That night after dinner, Badu decided it was time to tell her the full plan. He sat on the mat beside her and took a deep breath, his heart pounding in his chest. Amma, he began quietly, there is something I need to discuss with you, something very important. Amma looked at him, sensing the seriousness in his tone. What is it, my husband? You, you know I have no manhood, Badu said the words sounding heavier than he intended. And because of that, we cannot have children. The villagers are beginning to whisper about us, about our childlessness. I cannot allow them to find out the truth. Amma's heart sank, but she remained silent, waiting for him to continue. I have found a solution, Badu said, his voice now steady. I have asked Kofi to, to, to give you a child. Amma's eyes widened in shock. She stared at Badu, trying to process what he just heard. Surely she had misunderstood him. Surely her husband wouldn't suggest such a thing. No, he wouldn't dare. Wait, what? She asked, her voice trembling. You asked Kofi to do what? To get me pregnant. Badu nodded, avoiding her gaze. It's the only way, Amma. If we don't have a child sooner or later, the villagers will know something is wrong. They will shame us both. This is the only solution. Amma couldn't believe her ears. She knew her husband's secret, but 
Never has she imagined he would go such length. So you want me to sleep with another man? With Kofi, your friend? Badu nodded his head again, this time more firmly. Yes, he has agreed to help. You will sleep with him and no one will ever know the truth. The child will be ours and we will be safe. Mama felt a wave of news arise in her stomach. She stood up abruptly, shaking her head in disbelief. But do, do you even hear yourself? You're asking me to betray our marriage, to betray myself. How can you expect me to do such a selfish thing? It's not betrayer, Badu insisted, standing up as well. It's survivor. Don't you understand, Ama? This is the only way to save us. No, Ama shouted, her voice crackling with anger and hot. I will not do this, Badu. I will not be used like this. I don't care what the villagers are saying. Badu's face darkened. His calm demeanor began to slip away, replaced by frustration. You will do as I say, Ama. I am your husband. It is your duty to, to obey me. Ama shook her head again, tears brimming in her eyes. I won't. I can't. Badu clenched his fist, his voice low and dangerous. If you don't do this, Things will get much worse for you, Ama. You think the gossip is bad. Wait until the entire village know you have defied your husband. I will make sure that they turn against you. Ama stood her ground, refusing to be intimidated. You can't force me, Badu. I am not a slave. I will not do this. But Badu's patience was wearing thin. Over the next days, he went from pleading with Ama to see reasons to making her life a living nightmare. He refused her food, leaving her hungry while he ate alone. He began nagging over the smallest mistakes, criticizing anything she did. If she dropped something, he would yell. If she forgot to sweep a corner of the house, he would throw insults at her. And then one evening, when Ama made a simple mistake while cooking, Badu snapped. He struck her across the face, sending her reeling backwards. Ama clenched her cheeks. Stone, tears filled her eyes. Badu stood over her, his voice cold and merciless. You will do as I say, Ama. Or things will get much worse for you. You think this is bad? This is just the beginning. Ama sobbed quietly, her heart broken. She had never imagined her marriage would come to this. The man she thought she loved was turning into a monster before her eyes. She knew she couldn't continue like this. But what could she do? Leaving him was a taboo in the village. No married woman leaves her husband. She had no one to turn to. Her family would never accept her back if she left her husband's house because she would be seen as a disgrace and a disappointment to her family. People would say she was not able and not woman enough to keep a home. For days, Badu's abuse continued. He berated her refused her food and hit her when he felt she wasn't complying to his demands. Every night, Ama lay awake, the weight of her husband's strength suffocating her. She couldn't bear the thought of being with Kofi, but she also couldn't endure Badu's cruelty anymore. Finally, after weeks of torment, Ama broke. She sat in silence one evening as Badu scolded her, her mind numb with exhaustion and fear. When he finally finished his tirade, she looked up at him, her voice barely a whisper. I will do it, she said. Badu paused, almost surprised by Alma's quiet surrender. He had expected her to fight more, 
to resist longer. But seeing her broken spirit gave him a strange sense of triumph. For a moment, he softened as though he thought she might eventually see this as the best solution. You have made the right decision, Badu said, his voice attempting a gentleness that felt hollow. You will see, Ama, this will be good for both of us. You will have a child and the village will stop talking. I am not ready to lose my respect and my integrity in this village. Ama didn't respond. She simply stared at the ground, her mind swelling with guilt, fear and resentment. Her heart ached in a way that words could not express. She had dreamed of a loving marriage, of children who would run around the compound laughing. But now her life felt like a trap. And Badu, the man she once loved, was the one holding the key to her prison. The next morning, Badu called for coffee. The atmosphere in the house was tense, as though even the walls themselves could feel the unease. Kofi arrived reluctantly, his steps heavy with guilt. He hadn't been able to sleep since agreeing to Badu's plan. Every time he closes his eyes, he imagines Amma's face, her confusion and pain. He had once been proud to call Badu his friend, but now all he felt was shame. When Kofi entered the compound, he noticed Amma sitting on the porch, her face pale and expressionless. Badu greeted him with a firm handshake, but the smile on his face was strained. It is time, Badu said in a low voice, glancing at Amma as though she were just another part of the plan, another thing to be managed. Kofi hesitated. He didn't know if he could go through with this. Seeing Amma sitting there, her spirit so clearly broken, made him feel sick. Badu, are you sure? Kofi began, but Badu cut him off with a sharp look. Don't start second guessing now, Badu said firmly. We have come too far. This is happening and is happening today. Amma hearing their exchange felt her stomach churn. The reality of what was about to happen hit her like a tidal wave. She hadn't thought it would come to this. She had hoped, prayed even, that somehow Badu would change his mind. That he would realize how cruel and selfish and demeaning this was. But here they are and it was too late to turn back. Badu turned to Amma, his expression cold. Go with Kofi now, he ordered, the words like stones falling from his mouth. Amma stood slowly, feeling as though she was watching herself from outside her own body. She walked past Badu without a word, her feet moving automatically as though she had no control over them anymore. She didn't even look at Kofi as they walked towards the small hut Badu had prepared for this meeting. Inside, the air was thick with tension. Kofi closed the door behind them, but he didn't move. He couldn't bring himself to even look at Amma. I am sorry, Kofi whispered, his voice barely audible. As the weeks passed after the fateful night, Amma couldn't shake the shame and guilt that clung to her like a shadow. Every day, she carried the weight of what had happened between her and Kofi. And though no one else in the village knew the truth, it felt like a secret too heavy to bear. Whenever she looked at Badu, all she saw was betrayer. The man who had once sworn to protect her had sold her dignity for his pride. And yet, a month later, something changed. Amma began feeling strange, nauseous, in the morning, tired more easily. And her body felt different in ways she hadn't experienced before. She feared what she suspected. But when she went to the village healer, her suspicions were confirmed. She was pregnant. When she told Badu the news, his reaction was unlike anything she had expected. 
he leaped up with joy, his face glowing with pride as if all of his dreams had finally come true. The guilt and desperation that had consumed him for long vanished in an instant. I knew it, Badu declared, his chest puffed out with arrogance. The village will finally see that I am truly a man, a real man, he boasted. Ama forced a smile, though her heart was heavy. The news spread quickly, and soon the entire village was buzzing with excitement. Women came to visit her, offering congratulations and words of encouragement and advice. Many were genuinely happy for her, but Ama couldn't ignore the whisper of those who had hoped for her downfall. Some villagers had suspected that something wasn't right with Bado and Ama's marriage. But with the news of her pregnancy, all doubts seemed to vanish. Meanwhile, Kofi kept his distance. He focused on his own family, his wife and his children, trying to forget the role he had played in Ama's pregnancy. Every time he saw Ama in the village, he avoided her gaze, guilt gnawing at him. His wife, unaware of the secret, continued her life as though everything was normal. But Kofi couldn't shake the feeling that it was all going to unravel one day. Months passed and Ama's belly grew. Despite the tumor in her heart, she found moments of happiness in her pregnancy. She couldn't deny the ex excitement she felt when the baby kicked. All the way her heart swelled with love for the child growing inside her. But deep down, she knew that her happiness was fragile, that the foundation of her life with Badu was built on lies and betrayal. When the time finally came, Ama gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. The entire village celebrated Badu. Badu, who had once been the subject of whisper and suspicion, was now hailed as a proud father. He paraded through the village with his son in his arms, accepting the congratulations of every villager. He was, for a brief moment, the happiest man alive. But something changed not long after the birth of the boy. At first, it was small things. Badu seemed distant, colder. He no longer smiled when he looked at the baby, and his affection for Ama seemed to vanish overnight. Ama noticed it but kept quiet, hoping that it was just the stress of becoming a father that had changed him. However, as the days passed, Badu's behavior grew worse. He began avoiding the baby altogether, refusing to hold him or even acknowledge his cries. Whenever Ama tried to talk to him about it, Badu's response was short and dismissive. Then one night, it all came to a head. Ama was in the kitchen preparing dinner when Badu stormed in, his face twisted in anger. Without warning, he grabbed the pot she was staring and threw it to the ground, spilling the food everywhere. Look at you, Badu sneered, his voice filled with venom. You think you are perfect wife now, right? Don't you? Carrying that child like some prized possession. But I know what you did. I know what you are. Amma's heart pounded in her chest, confusion and fear rising within her. Badu, what are you talking about? Why are you acting like this? Don't pretend! Badu shouted, his eyes wide with rage. You are nothing but a filthy prostitute, Amma. You think I didn't see it? You think I didn't know what you did to get that child? Amma felt as though the air had been sucked out of the room. Her throat tightened and tears well up in her eyes. Badu, I did what you asked me to do. You begged me to. Shut up! Badu roared, his voice shaking the walls. I don't want to hear it. To think you even enjoyed it while he was doing it. You disgust me. Amma, I can't even look at you. You are not my wife. 
You are nothing to me. Amma stood frozen, her heart breaking with every word that Badu hurled at her. She couldn't understand where this hatred was coming from. Badu had been the one to orchestrate everything. The one who had pleaded with her to go through with this. He even frustrated her into accepting this. And now he was blaming her as though she had betrayed him. From that night on, Badu's cruelty only worsened. He refused to sleep in the same room as her, calling her degrading names with every chance he got. He would look at their son with disdain, as though the baby's very existence was an insult to him. Amma tried to shield her son from his father's hatred, but there was only so much she could do. The villagers began to notice the change in Badu, though they didn't understand why. On the surface, he would play the role of the proud father in public, but at home, he had turned into someone Amma barely recognized. She endured his abuse in silence, knowing that if she tried to leave, she would be shamed by the villagers. She had no one to turn to, no way out of the mystery that had consumed her life. One evening, as Amma crowded her baby in her arms, rocking him to sleep, she whispered through her tears, I don't know how much, how much longer I can do this.